and we will start right now. Before we make bids, I'm always going to ask you the same question this morning. And it's a simple question. Is the bid that I indicate forcing or non-forcing? So on this first hand, on your device or on your other window, you can see that I have a little auction here between you and your partner. right? And the dealer is always... You can always notice who the dealer is because there's a D in the upper left-hand corner here. That's the person that's opening. And on this hand, our partner opened one club. We responded one spade and partner jumped to two no trump. So all the bids that we're going to be looking at are going to be highlighted in yellow. So the first question of today is, is two no trump forcing or non-forcing? All right, so take a second, figure that out and just select it right on your screen, folks. So two no trump forcing or non-forcing. All right, looks like almost all of you have answered. This was a quick one. And we might have wanted to take more time because only two of you got this correct. This is a non-forcing bid. Now let me clarify here. I know you're probably saying what the heck because most of you think this bid is forcing. This shows 18, 19 balanced, and it will always show this. Whenever it goes 1, 1, and we rebid 2, no trump, it shows 18, 19 balanced. This is almost never going to be passed, right? That's why people think it's a forcing bid, because it's such a strong hand. Why would we ever pass it? And I'll show you that in a moment, but just remember this. We've shown 18, 19 balanced. We've limited our hand. Even though we're almost never going to see a pass after this, this is still technically non-forcing. Right? And it's because sometimes our partner, or us on this hand, are going to have to have responded with a light-looking hand. Like maybe even a five count sometimes, or a shapely four. So we want the ability to pass to no trump when we've done that. Okay, And let's take a quick look at, at a hand. All right, So this is the same auction we just saw our partner opened a club we responded a spade and they jumped to two no trump what bid would you make with this hand and remember just like we discovered on the last slide this two no trump bid is not technically forcing but it does show 18 19 balanced so my question is what do we do with this hand we, we would definitely have responded one spade i think we can all agree with that but now that partner has jumped to two no what bid are we going to make? And I always love starting these classes and seeing that we have a lot of different answers popping up. <laughs> this is good. It means it's a good question. And we might have a little bit of doubt on what to do with hands like this. So I'll give it a couple more seconds and reveal the answers. Okay, the majority of you are passing and that is actually the right bid. All right, this is a good example of a hand where we really wouldn't want to continue, right? We have not only only six points, we're totally flat for three, 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 which is a bad shape usually for any contract, but no Trump certainly as well. We have no source of tricks and look at our spot cards, right? The cards that aren't honors. Uh, we don't have any tens, nines. This looks like a pretty ugly hand that partner might struggle to make just two no Trump with, right? So those of you that bid, I'm guessing maybe just our precondition to be bidding after partner rebids 2 no. But remember, just like we saw on the first slide, this is not a forcing bid. Right? Even though, again, we're almost never passing because of the strength it shows. It's a bid that we can pass with hands like this. All right, let's take a look at another example. Same auction. Our partner opened a club. We responded a spade, and they bid 2 no Trump, and this is our hand. Now, I'll, I'll tell you that if you play something conventional here, go ahead and make that bid. Right? Some of you may, might understand this a little better and have a conventional solution. But if not, just make the bid that would make the most sense.
Very nice. The first four answers were all different. This is definitely a good question for us. Okay, we only have maybe two suspect bids here. So I'm going to make the bid that I would make normally, and I will explain it in just a moment here. The three diamond bid, which would be correct here if you play a conventional agreement called new minor forcing. And there are other things you can play here, but three diamonds after the auction starts minor, major, no trump. The new minor usually shows this sort of hand. Uh, over two no trump, it shows a hand that can play game. And it says, hey, I'm still interested in trying to find a fit in a major suit. It usually shows five in the major we bid originally. Right? So this is just an attempt to figure out the best strain before we bid our game. Um, those of you that bid game or bid three diamonds or even three spades, you were correct here. You should know we have game, even though you only have eight points. Remember, partners to no bid was 1819 balanced. Okay, so here you're going to be bidding a game. Those of you that bid three no did well because you got your side to game, but we might have missed uh, a better spade contract. Those of you who bid three spades, if you're not playing new minor forcing, you can use this as just this hand, right? It should be forcing with five spades. And three diamonds, again, is a conventional bid called new minor forcing. If you want to learn more about that, you can head to learnbridge.nyc. There's a decent lesson on there for new minor forcing in the notes and videos category. Uh, so just want to mention to you guys, if you have any questions as we're moving along these slides, feel free to just type that right into the chat on YouTube, and I'll answer them as I see them. Okay, so if you, if you need to clarify something or you just want to ask a, a question relating to the hand, just throw it in the chat and we will go over that as we see the questions. So let's jump to one more hand on this auction. Our partner opened a club and we bid a spade and they bid two no again. What do we do with this hand? This is a fun one. I see we, we are taking a little bit more time to think about this one, and I have this totally understandable. Right. Partner showing a big hand, and we have certainly a pretty good hand ourselves. So after 2-0, no, what the heck do we do with this thing? Okay, we have nine answers so far, with only one of them being the correct answer, in my opinion. All right, so let's take a look. I would bid six no trump with this hand. I think it's clearly the best bid, and I want to discuss why. Uh, the biggest thing about slam auctions uh, especially if you're not in, you know, an expert experience level partnership, you know, you want to keep things as simple as you possibly can. Now, a, a lot of the bids that were chosen here are bids that you might clearly understand the meaning of from your perspective. But if you're not playing with a partner you normally play with, this is a situation that's very, very common to have misunderstandings between your partnership and let's take a look at our hand right our partner showed 18 19 balanced and we have a balanced 15 count do we have a major suit fit no we don't actually partner denied four spades when they bid two no so we should know we're going to play no trump 
we should also know that we're going to play slam. We have at least 33 points. The simplest and best way to get to this slam is to simply bid it. Two of you did so. Six no trump right here. All right. Those of you that did anything else, you may very well have gotten the slam. All right. If your partner bids again or doesn't get confused along the way, you're likely to get to slam at some point. But every bid we make here that's not six no trump has the possibility to confuse partner and keep us out of this what appears to be very very good slam and and the question here here is why not blackwood first and find out about the ace and king of diamonds well, let's think about that real quick uh what would blackwood be here <laughs> the answer is i'm not sure right four no trump would likely not be blackwood it would be quantitative uh four clubs you might think is gerber but is your partner going to understand that? Did you discuss this? And let's think about the points that we're missing. We're missing seven total points at maximum, right? That's if partner only has 18. What's the likelihood that those seven points are exactly the ace and king of diamonds or the ace and king of clubs? Uh, the answer is very unlikely, right? We have 33 total points. We're missing seven at worst, maybe only six. And we should know that this is a hand that is a huge percentage of the time just going to make 12 or 13 tricks, right? When partners as strong as they are, and so are we, right? So we don't really want to confuse partner by trying to make a Blackwood bid because what is Blackwood here? I mean, I, I wouldn't, if I was playing with someone that we had not discussed any system over this, I really wouldn't know how to continue other than to bid a new suit and see what partner does. But every time we do that, we risk confusing not only ourselves, but our partner. So here, if you know you have a slam and it's so likely you're going to be making it, just bid it. All right. I hope that answers your question. And we will jump on to the next one if I don't see any more questions in the chat. Let's see a new auction here. This time our partner opened a club. We responded a spade. And they bid two hearts. So this two heart bid, is it forcing or not forcing? And real quick before I show you the answer to this one, uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube and haven't jumped into BidBox yet, just uh, open up a browser and in your address bar type BidBox.xyz. If you're watching this live, which means you're watching it on Saturday morning, March 16th, you can jump in and make your choices right along with the rest of us. So it's BidBox.xyz. I typed that right in the chat. And this is a forcing bid. In fact, this is what we would call a reverse, right? Partner opened one of a suit, and then their second bid was at the two level in a higher ranking suit, right? So in a club of spade, our partner bid two hearts. In fact, this is one of only a couple of standard bids where the opener can force us to bid again. Usually when the opener bids a new suit, it's non-forcing, unless it is this, a reverse, and the other one would be a jump shift. Right, so let's say it went a diamond, a spade, and partner bid three clubs. Right, same thing. That is forcing also. In fact, that's game forcing. This reverse here is forcing for one round at least, but it's unlimited in strength. So it's 17 plus points. And these bids, the reverses and jump shifts, are how we show unbalanced good hands. We kind of all have a decent understanding of how to bid our balanced good hands, right? We either open some number of no trump or rebid no trump. Here, when we reverse or when we jump shift, we're showing unbalanced good hands, right? So this is 17 plus, and it shows at least four hearts, right? So we would expect an unbalanced hand with some clubs and hearts and strength, 17 plus points. Forcing for one round, folks. So let's take a look at a hand with this same auction. Our partner opened a club, we bid a spade, they bid two hearts, which we just realized is our reverse. What do we do with this one?
Okay, looks like we have two answers that are getting kind of the most of the most of the choices here, and there are three hearts and four hearts. Uh, three hearts is the best bid. All right, and here's what we should think about. Um, in these situations, there are conventional treatments that can kind of help us clarify the types of hands we're looking at, because this can usually create problems with our rebid. But we should play with the understanding that if our partner reverses, they're always going to bid at least one more time, right? And this is kind of our slow approach to our game. If you jump to four hearts, I mean, especially if you haven't talked to partner about any advancing after reverse, I think four hearts is very reasonable. So if you chose that, it's not going to be wrong. However, our hand could be very, very good for partner, right? Not only do we have good four card heart support, we have a singleton, right? And we do have an ugly spade suit. This hand certainly isn't great, but if partner is really strong, we kind of want to leave that room for them to make another descriptive bid if they need to, right? Something like a control bid or anytime they're super strong, something that they can do to continue the auction at a lower level. Uh, so four hearts and three hearts to me are relatively 100% scores, right? However, if I know my partner's not going to pass, I'll bid three hearts first and try to show them a little bit better of a hand. Right? And I know you're looking at this saying, this is a bad hand. And you're right, but opposite a reverse, right? Partner showing an unbalanced hand with clubs and hearts. Picture this. Picture shortness in spades and all of their good points in hearts, diamonds, and clubs. We have a pretty darn good hand for that, right? Because our partner's solving our biggest problem, our, our many losers in that spade suit. All right, so take your time with hands like this, especially when we know partner's going to be bidding again. All right, next case. All right, so this auction, uh, and partner was the dealer here. They started with one no trump. We bid two diamonds, which was a transfer. Our partner bid two hearts. And now we've bid three clubs. So is our three club bid forcing or non-forcing? It's a pretty common auction. I want to make sure we get it right. All right, so I am realizing based on most of your responses that this might be too easy for you guys. All right, so here's the rule. Uh, whenever we transfer and then bid a new suit, we are not only forcing, we're making a game forcing bid essentially. Right, so this three club bid by us is natural. It shows clubs and it's game forcing. And this is kind of how we're going to show an unbalanced hand with exactly five hearts. Right, we've already transferred to hearts. If we had six or more hearts, we would be bidding game and hearts, right? This three club bid is more of a, hey, partner, I know we have game, but I'm unbalanced. I have five hearts and in this case, usually at least four clubs. And this takes the place of our three no rebid. If we jump to three no trump over two hearts, we would say, hey partner, you know I have exactly five hearts. I'm relatively balanced, make your choice. This is more of, hey partner, same thing, but I'm unbalanced and I actually have clubs as well. So almost always this is an attempt to find a heart fit before we get to the four level. And for those rare occasions where partner has the right hand, we may in fact play in clubs. Right? Not going to happen too often, but as long as we understand one key thing from this slide, after stamen or transfers, when we bid a new suit, it is over a transfer always forcing and over stamen almost always. We'll see uh, possibly an exception to that in the coming slides. All right, next case. This is a good one. We're, we're mixing a double in now. So on this hand, our partner has opened two hearts. Our right-hand opponent has overcalled three clubs, and we doubled. So is our double forcing or non-forcing? Right. Again, partner opened two hearts. Right-hand opponent overcalled three clubs, and we doubled. Forcing or non-forcing? All 
And once again, for those of you just joining on YouTube, if you go to bidbox.xyz in your browser, type that right into your address bar, you can make your choices right along with us. If you're here on, sorry, Saturday morning, March 16th, you can make your choices with us. If you're watching this replay later, you will not be able to access Bidbox, I'm sorry, but just make sure to catch the start time next time and you can join us for these bids. And we see a non-forcing bid right here, folks. And this goes against the huge percent of you, sorry, the 58% of you that actually think this is forcing. So here's the rule, folks. After our side makes a preemptive bid and either one of us double it's always penalty All right so in, in fact this is non-forcing because we never want partner to bid we're telling partner please pass because i want to defend three clubs the opponents have gotten way out over their skis and we want to penalize them and if you think of the logic of this folks if you don't remember it 100 percent of the time think of this do we know what partner's hand is when they open two hearts? Absolutely, right? We have a pretty amazing understanding of what they have. They have a bad hand and they have a six card heart suit, right? We know what to bid. When whatever we're holding, we're gonna know what to, to make our call because we know partner's hand almost perfectly. We're never gonna need to take out double in those spots, guys, right? Because we will know whether to bid something or not. So the double here, we really want to have as penalty because if our partner makes a weak two, we need to have some stuff, right? And on this hand, this double suggests, hey, not only do I have a good hand, I am definitely going to be beating three clubs, right? So please pass and let's take our best plus score possible. All right. Any questions, folks, just type those right into the chat and I'll get to them as I see them. We'll take a look at another double. This time our partner passed. Our right hand opponent jumped and opened four hearts. They look nice and happy that they get to preempt so effectively. What's our double? Is it forcing or non-forcing? Essentially, when I say this in, a, in an auction like this, I'm asking, is this penalty or takeout, basically? And it'll be forcing if it's takeout. It will be non-forcing if it's penalty. I am so happy we are doing this question because 64% of you think this is non-forcing. And in fact, this is always takeout and by, for that matter, it's always forcing, right? Our agreements in standard bidding should be this. If the opponents are preempting, making some sort of preemptive bid at or below the level of four hearts, all of our doubles should be takeout. And this is a situation where we really want to have a takeout double because think of the action we've seen so far. Our partner passed, our right hand opponent is preempting at a very high level, showing a bad hand and a lot of hearts, eight or more usually. What do we rate to have? Well, a lot of times we rate to have good hands with shape and we need to be able to take advantage of the little room we have left to try to find a safe landing spot. Now, when they preempt like this, they're making it really hard for us. They're chewed up so much bidding room. We really need to have double B takeout because it's the only bid that doesn't take up any more room, right? So double here would be obviously be a very strong hand with two or three places to play, right? So make that agreement with your partners it's actually a spot right on the convention card on the left hand side of the convention card it says versus opponents preempts just write down four hearts in that spot so we play takeout doubles through the level of four hearts all right guys next one all right so now we're getting a little more complicated in our auctions right on this hand we were the dealer we opened one diamond our partner responded one spade, we rebid one no trump, and now partner's jumping to three spades. So my question for all of you, as usual this morning is, is this three spade bid forcing or non-forcing? You choose.
And if you're joining us this morning, March 16th on YouTube, and you want to bid along with us, just open a browser, either in, on another device or just open a new tab on the window you have open and type in bidbox.xyz into your browser and you'll be brought right to the bidbox lesson. Make your calls right along with us. Okay, folks, this is like 50-50 almost. Half of you are saying it, or more than half of you are saying it's non-forcing, which is actually the correct answer. And almost half of you thought it was forcing. So this is essentially just an invitational bid. And I want you to think about partners' other options. Sometimes that's the, the best thing you can do. I think about what partner didn't do. Could partner have bid four spades? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, four spades would show 13 or more points and six or more spades. Here they jumped a level, but they still only bid three. This is almost always our invitational bid, and it certainly is here. It says, hey, partner, I have six spades, and I have around 10 to 12 points, right? I'm not sure if we have game, but I want to invite you to game in spades or possibly no trump. But to be honest, that one no trump rebid by us is almost always going to contain two spades or more, right? So three spades is just our invitational bid as responder, asking partner if they have enough for game and whether or not we're playing spades or no trump. All right, so same auction, but now I've given us a hand to bid, All right? So we opened a diamond, our partner bid a spade, we rebid a no trump, it was our only choice, and partner jumped to three spades. What do we do with this hand? All right, this is interesting. We only have 25% of the field making the correct choice, which for this question is pass. Pass for sure. Remember, our partner is not making a forcing bid. We just got there on the last slide. We know three spades is invitational. Our hand is a pretty ugly minimum, right? We have a 12 count, but it's a bad 12 count, right? We have very few quick tricks, lots of scattered values, and our shortest suit is spades, right? We have a fit, but is our hand gaining in value by having that fit? Are we trumping anything in our hand? No. And with 12, partner didn't bid a game themselves. They're asking if we're at the high end or the low end. And here, we are far at the low end, maybe the lowest end we could be, right? So we just pass. Right? It's okay to pass. This is not a forcing bid. It's exactly what partner's going to want us to do, especially considering that they're going to have a six-card spade suit here. Right? So pass, and then just congratulate partner if they make three spades. Right? This is a hand where we may already be too high based on kind of the ugliness of our own hand. All right, guys, let's take a look at another one. So kind of the same exact situation. We open a diamond partner bit of spade. We better no trump again, which is perfect, and they jump to three spades. And if you notice, this is the same number of points we had in the last one. All right, so partners jump into three spades after our rebid. What do we do with this hand?
All right, very nice on this one. Most of you made the correct call, which is four spades. And this is a, a, an interesting situation because technically it's the same values that we had on the last hand. But this is a an amazing 12, or really 13, because we do have some shortness points in our clubs here. But it is clearly, clearly much, much better than the last hand we saw. Here we have not only quick tricks, we have a guaranteed nine card spade fit because we have three of them. We also have a roughing value in clubs, too small there. And that diamond suit is certainly a potential source of tricks given the strength and the length of that suit, right? So here, while the last 10 with 12 points, we were clearly passing. This is a much, much better version of a 12 point hand with lots more going for it. More trump, shortness, and a side source of tricks. So here, Four spades makes a ton of sense when partner invites, whereas the last hand, that ugly 12 we had, no chance. All right, so you see the difference. A lot of my local students, and some of you on here, I'm sure have heard me say, you know, good 10s or good 11s. You know, these last two hands are great versions of bad 12s and good 12s, right, based on the situation we find ourselves in. So good job, guys. I, I love the aggressiveness of this group, 85% of you bidding four spades and you know one more person bidding game but four spades would be the one we want to bid here for sure because that's where most of our value comes from on this hand three no would be a massive gamble okay so this time we open a diamond with our hand our partner responded a heart and we bid one spade and my question again is that one spade bid forcing or non-forcing Again, we open a diamond, our partner bit a heart, and we responded one spade. Is one spade forcing or non-forcing? And at the moment, we are almost perfectly divided between the two choices. Now we're seeing a little bit more of a lead. Forcing is getting a greater percentage of the votes, which is unfortunate because this is non-forcing. Now, uh, this is one that confuses a whole bunch of people. So let's chat about this for a little longer. We all know that new suits are forcing by the responder, right? So if the responder hasn't passed yet in an auction, Whenever they bid a new suit, it's understood that they're forcing us to bid again. However, this is not true for the opener. In fact, it's almost never true for the opener. When the opener bids new suits, it's not forcing. This one spade bid shows around 12 to 17 points and four spades. So it's a wider ranging bid than kind of a one no trump rebid, re which is 12 to 14, because we're gonna need have some flexibility when we bid new suits but while it does have that bigger range it is certainly not forcing All right so this one spade bid could absolutely be passed by partner it almost never will guys right again some of this is yeah it's not forcing but really partner's going to bid most of the time and that's true here as well however it is certainly not forcing partner to bid all right, and just remember, put yourself on different sides of the table. When you are the responder and you are an unpassed hand, every new suit you bid forces partner to bid again. But when you're the opener, the only new suits that aren't conventional are that, that are going to be forcing are reverses and jump shifts like we talked about earlier, right? So if we are reversing, certainly forcing, or if we're jump shifting, certainly forcing, but here... When we're just bidding a new suit at the one level, it's absolutely non-forcing 100% of the time. All right. And once again, folks, any questions you have, type them right into the chat. I know a lot of this might be surprising to some of you, right, that haven't really dug deep into, you know, these these auctions with, you know, bids that are pretty normally seen throughout the, throughout the day. Right? And a lot of you are kind of bidding when you don't necessarily have to in certain situations. All right. Next case. Uh, this time we open a diamond, our partner bid a heart, we bid a spade, 
And after our spade bid, partner bid two hearts. So is this forcing or non-forcing? Right? We opened one diamond, our partner responded one heart. We bid a spade and partner bid two hearts. Well, this is amazing because we have our first sweep, 100% of you getting the answer correct. This is non-forcing, right? And this is partner bidding a suit that's already been bid, right? Responder responded one heart and then bid two hearts. This is interesting. All of you got this right, but this is a hand I frequently see people get wrong at the club, you know, with regularity, right? They're getting it wrong because they they kind of think the auction is too low for us to pass when really this is exactly the time we want to pass partners saying look i have six or more hearts and a bad hand and if you think of it this way folks when we open the bidding and rebid a suit our own suit like a club a spade two clubs we're always showing towards the minimum of our range right we're showing extra length for sure but towards the minimum the same is true of responder. Here, partner responded one heart and then immediately rebid their hearts at the lowest level. So that's also a minimum, except this minimum starts at six. So that's what we're looking at here. A hand that's probably six to nine points and six hearts or more. And saying, partner, if you want to play with me next week, you better be passing. Uh, so this is my suit and this is where I want to play. All right. Next case, we opened a diamond. Our partner bid a heart. We bid a spade again, and they now have bid two clubs, forcing or non-forcing. And if you want to get extra credit, type into the chat what two clubs is. And by extra credit, I mean nothing tangible whatsoever, but a, a virtual pat on the back. Right, so we'll, we'll just start with absolutely forcing. And I haven't seen anybody type it into the chat. There we go, Jim. Good job. And Mark and K133566. This is actually fourth suit forcing. So whenever we are in an auction just together with ourselves, right? I've opened, my partner's responded. The opponents haven't overcalled or doubled. Anytime we bid all four suits, that fourth suit, is fourth suit forcing it's the best named convention ever because it's so self-explanatory it says hey partner we're going to play game i may have no clubs whatsoever this is totally artificial i just want to let you know at the lowest level possible that we are going to play game and i will tell you more after you make your call All right so fourth suit forcing the game and even if you don't play this convention guys you should recognize that partner is the responder and they've been a new suit so whether you play fourth suit forcing or not this is still absolutely a forcing bid because it is a new suit from the correct player the responder good so this those last two questions were terrible you guys just crushed those no one got no one's gotten an answer wrong yet but i think i have a solution for that i have a tough one for you now this time we open a diamond our partner bit a heart, we bit a spade, and partner jumped to three clubs. So my question is, is that forcing or non-forcing? And I will remind you that it's my job to, uh, to try to trick you sometimes. Because bridge is a really tough game, and not everything may be as it seems when we have all their options available to us. And I'll talk about what I mean in a second. But here we still have quite a few of you on one pathway. But maybe I convinced some others to jump over to a non-forcing choice. Now I know some of you are screaming into your YouTube screens right now saying, what the heck? Responders bidding a new suit. It's gotta be forcing. And this, unfortunately, is an exception to that rule. And here's why. We saw on the last slide that two clubs was gonna be fourth suit forcing, right? 
it was actually going to be our game forcing bid and it is artificial right so we may or may not have clubs well that creates a problem for the hands that we have with clubs without enough points to game force right so this is a really interesting one because of the other choices we had, if I wanted to game force, I absolutely could have bid two clubs. Even though it's not clubs necessarily, I can bid clubs on the second time around and show clubs in a game forcing hand. So in this case, this three club bid is actually one of two types of hands. I, I like to play it as kind of preemptive, like a bad hand and long clubs. So what would I do with, let's say seven points when I have four hearts and six clubs, right? If my partner opens a diamond, I'm absolutely gonna respond to heart. And now if partner bids a spade, if I play fourth suit forcing, I'm kind of stuck, right? I really don't have any bid that's gonna describe my hand, so I might just be doing something that isn't going to make a ton of sense for my shape. Another way to play three clubs is invitational with clubs, right? You can choose what to do with your partner on these hands, but the one odd thing about this auction, and this is absolutely an attempt by me to trick you into thinking this is forcing, this is not forcing because of the alternatives we had, right? We could have game force by bidding two clubs and then rebidding clubs later to show clubs. So here, this jump to three clubs is kind of solving a, an issue we have with an auction like this. So I have a, a question here. Let's see. Forcing by opener. What about one heart, two clubs, two diamonds? My book says forcing for one round. Okay. Uh, I think we're getting back to a previous question, but you're talking if I open a heart and my partner bids two clubs and I bid two diamonds, um, well, that's absolutely forcing because... You know, I, if we're playing two over one, which we should be, that two club bid was game forcing. If I'm understanding that correctly, uh, let me know. Uh, if I got it wrong, just just maybe type it in again here. But on this one, I'm I'm expecting uh, a question or two on this, but I haven't seen them yet. Uh, does this make sense to you guys? Specifically because in these auctions, right, that partner of ours could have bid two clubs to game force. Right, this three club bit has to kind of be some sort of natural non-forcing bit. Right, and I'll leave it up to you guys. You can certainly play it as, you know, an invitational hand or weak, but it certainly should not should not be forcing. Right? We should be able to get out for three clubs. All right, let's jump to the next one. All right, so this time we opened a diamond. Our partner bit a heart. We bit a spade, and they jumped to three spades. What is this? Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, Festival Fluter here. Uh, if you're not playing two over one, um, I would usually assume that the person that bid two clubs would bid again. That's a normal agreement if you're not playing two over one as game forcing, is if partner bids two over one, they promise you another bid. So I no, I would never play two diamonds as forcing for one round but what i would tell you is if i'm not playing a game forcing two over one system partner better be bidding over two diamonds right I, th I think that's pretty normal but i will urge you if you're not playing two over one yet to maybe take a look at the lesson on learnbridge.nyc and find a partner to play it with it is amazing how helpful it is especially when you both have very good hands and now we're really jamming here Absolutely non-forcing on this one. Three spades, while it looks like a big bid, is simply an invitation to game, right? It shows a good 10 to 12, and it shows a fit in spades. And always think about what partner could have done instead. Right? And here, there are two very obvious things that partner could have done if they wanted to game for us, right? They could simply have bid four spades, which is probably the most normal thing, or maybe with extra stuff, they could bid fourth suit forcing and then four spades, right? So partner had a ton of different ways to force us to bid. Here they jump to three spades because they have none of those hands, right? They have an invitational hand. So definitely non-forcing, right? We will choose how high to go next. All right, kind of a similar choice here. We started with one diamond, partner bit a heart. We bit a spade and they jumped to two no. All right, so is partner's 2 no trump bid forcing or non-forcing? 
Diamond Heart of Spade, two now. Alright, really good stuff here, guys. Uh, definitely non-forcing. Another invitational bid. And the, the key to recognizing these is just one below game, essentially, right? If we're not in a clear game forcing situation, which you should realize pretty quickly, uh, two no and three of a major are essentially those invitational bids, that one directly below game. And that's what partner's doing here. They're saying, hey, I don't have a fit with you, right? But I have a good 10 to 12, usually like 11 or 12 in these cases. And I wanna see if we can play a game and no trump right so this is certainly a bid that's going to see partner bid pretty frequently but again not forcing we could certainly pass this all right so let's take a look at a hand with this auction all right so we're going to have the same auction we opened a diamond our partner bid a heart we bid a spade and partner jumped to two no trump make your call with this hand. it's a really good one Once again, we opened a diamond, partner responded a heart, we responded a spade, and partner jumped a two now. It's a, we know that is non-forcing, but the question is, what are we doing with this hand? I'm going to give you guys a little more time. The answers are, are coming in a little more slowly here. I think we're being thoughtful because this is a tough choice, actually. Okay, so the best bid we can make here is three hearts. And let, let's talk about why. Uh, let's take a peek at the results here. A lot of you passed, and that's a little timid with this hand. You actually are technically in the middle of your range, right? You're, you want to think when partner invites, you want to kind of give yourself the 12 to 14 range, right? So here, you're kind of at the high end of that, right? You have 13 high card points, but that includes king, jack, nine, fifth of diamonds. That's worth a little extra. And you should certainly see that three no trump isn't necessarily the only game we could bid two of you bid three no which is going to be right a pretty good percentage of the time but why not give ourselves the best chance of all worlds three hearts is a great bid because it should say two things to partner it should say hey i accept your invitation right i'm bidding three hearts because partner may only have four of them and this isn't going to matter so i need them to be able to go back to three no but it also caters to the possibility of partner having five hearts, which is a real possibility. What would partner do with 11 points, five hearts, and a semi-balanced hand? They would bid it this way, right? They wouldn't really have a way to show a fifth heart and force the auction or show an invitational hand. So here they have to bid two now. So we bid three hearts as just kind of a courtesy bid. Hey, partner, I definitely want to play three no at least, but if you have five hearts... Well, let's play four hearts, which is a huge win for this hand. It, you're kind of really hoping partner has five hearts, right? Because of your stiff club. Uh, you want to play in hearts if that's a possibility. And we'll give partner the opportunity to make that choice, right? But again, uh, the passers, which there were quite a few of you. In fact, the vast majority of you passed. This is definitely a hand where you're being a little too timid. And again, look at those intermediate cards in your hand, right? Ace, Jack, 10 of spades, Ace, 10, eight of hearts, King, Jack, nine, eight of diamonds, right? Clubs may be a problem in no Trump, right? We would, you know, hope partner has that relatively well stopped, but it's a huge win if partner has made this bid with a five card heart suit. Now we get the best of all worlds. We get to play four hearts in a spot where we really want to.
All right, let's take a look at the next one. Welcome, Pam. Good to see you. All right, so this time we opened a spade. Our partner bid a no trump, which should be the forcing no trump if we're playing normal two over one. And we rebid two hearts. Is this two heart bid forcing or non forcing? And folks, if you put your email address in when you signed into Bidbox, right after we're done here, or a few minutes after we're done, you will get an email with a copy of this entire lesson. So you can replay all of your good and bad choices for as long and uh, for as long as you want. So enjoy that. All right, looks like we have pretty decent majority of you realizing that this is a non-forcing bid and for those of you that clicked forcing you put yourself in the wrong chair right remember responders new suits are forcing all right so when responder is an unpassed hand and they bid a new suit they're making a forcing bid openers new suits are almost never forcing right if they're at the lowest level and they're not those two special ones if they're not the reverse or the jump shift, they're not forcing, right? So two hearts here is, hey, I have four hearts and I have some sort of minimum, 12 to 17-ish. Uh, wide ranging for sure, but certainly not forcing. Partner can always pass this if they wanted to. So if you're struggling with these questions, just make it a conscious effort to realize who you are at the table, which is easier said than done, by the way. <laughs> a lot of us are too busy looking at our hand and wondering what the heck we're going to do to realize where the heck we are at the table, right? But if you're the opener, if you've opened the bidding, your new suits are not forcing. But if you're the responder, every time you bid a new suit, you're forcing partner to bid, except for that one, that one weird fourth suit forcing one we saw earlier. As, as is always in bridge, <laughs> there are certainly exceptions to every rule. All right, so this time we opened a spade. Our partner made the forcing no trump bid. We rebid two hearts just like we did the last time, and we realized that's non forcing. But now our partner bids three clubs. All right, so one spade, one no trump, two hearts by us, three clubs by partner. Forcing or non forcing? So this one is, is one that's definitely going to have some of you yelling into the screen again, because technically the responder, our partner, is bidding a new suit. So a lot of you would think this is forcing. In fact, more than half of you thought this was forcing. And I know you're frustrated with me, and I, and I understand. <laughs> but there are exceptions to everything, and here's the big thing that's happened first. Partner, when they bid one no trump, limited the strength of their hand All right so if partner bids a new suit so if i open a diamond and the responder bids a heart their range is six plus All right that's why it's forcing so when partner has only bid suits every time they bid a new suit it's forcing because their range is unlimited the one no trump response initially limited the strength of partner's hand right their hand is around six to twelve so in this case not only is three clubs not forcing it is actually weak it's a sign off this is how the responder signs off in their long suit so three clubs actually on this hand shows a six card club suit and probably six to nine ish point weight point count wise right? it always says i want to play here do not bid so we've kind of developed a rule for us here when we bid a forcing no trump and now my and, and now i bid a new suit right so i bid the forcing no trump i've heard partner open and respond and then i bid a new suit it is always a sign off right this is absolutely a bad hand and long clubs right so think of the logic right when when the responder is responding in a suit they've usually made an unlimited strength bid right something plus points when we've bid a no trump we've limited our hand so essentially when we've limited our hand we don't make forcing bids anymore right or at least certainly not game forcing bids so this three club bid is 
hey, I have a bad hand, a whole bunch of clubs. And yeah, Kelly, uh, the, you're just preaching to the choir here. The best way to learn bridge, and especially to learn the bidding, is to make incorrect choices. Right? And that, that's the hardest thing about bridge. It's why it's tough to become a very fine bridge player, because it's such a... You know, just an ego beatdown, right? Because you're gonna miss a lot of these until you stop missing them, right? So the more mistakes you're making, the better it is for you, to be honest, because it's one step closer to getting it right always. And on this one, you have another chance, guys. We open a spade, partner bids a no trump, and we bid two now. Is that forcing or non-forcing? This might be a blast from the not so distant past. This was our first example. Yeah. Exactly, festival. <laughs> Once we stop making the mistakes we're used to, we find new ones to make. We're never at a loss of mistakes in this game for sure. And I'm going to knock this off here. You guys are acing this question. Too easy. Way too easy. Non-forcing, right? And again, this is such a good hand. 18-19 balanced. Partners almost never passing, right? We're almost always playing game when we make the 2 no rebit. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. We're a huge percentage of the time playing game. But for those rare occasions where partner has responded light, we certainly want to give them a chance to get out with our lives. All right, so Tuna Trump, while it's very strong, is absolutely non-forcing. Good job, guys. All right. Now we've opened one heart. Our partners responded one no Trump, and we bid two spades. What do we do? Is this forcing or non-forcing? One heart, one no trump, two spades. Did that two spade bid force our partner to bid or can they pass? Thank you, Kelly. So this one is the reverse, guys. Sorry, I was I was speaking on mute there for about 30 seconds, so you missed some great stuff. <laughs> All right, two spades shows a big, big hand, 17 plus points, and an unbalanced hand, right? So when we opened a heart, partner bid a no trump, our second bid was beyond the two level of our original suit. Right, so two spades means that partner can't go back to two hearts. In fact, if they want to bid hearts, they have to go to the three level. So if you think about this, partners won no trump showed 6 to 12, right? What if they have only 6 points? Do we really want to be forcing partner to the 3 level if we don't have extra values? right? And that's why this 2 spade bid has to be such a good hand. Because partner has to go to 3 hearts if they want to go back to our original suit. And that is a level we might be uncomfortable with if they only have 6 points. So we need to make up for the points that they might be missing. Good. Most of you saw this as forcing. If you didn't see it as forcing, guys, just take a quick look at this specific spot. Our second bid is beyond the two level of our original suit. Right? Whenever we're not in a game force already, this is a very, very good hand. 17 plus and forcing for at least one round. Sweet. Now let's take a peek at a potential hand here. We open a heart and our partner bids no trump. What the heck do we do with this thing? And so we have already opened one heart and partner has responded one no trump. Make your call with this end. And uh, just a quick shout out for any of you that uh, I saw last week. I was on a cruise uh, with Larry Cohen in the Caribbean. Uh, and it was a, a nice regional at sea bridge cruise. It was a lot of fun. I got to bring Bidbox with me and try it out on the ship. Uh, it doesn't work as well on the ship as it does here, but we're getting uh, we're getting better at that. 
but I hope to see some of you on the high seas you know, sometime in the near future because that was a heck of a lot of fun. And leaving New York in, in late February is always a good choice. <laughs> I recommend it for anybody stuck up here. We have lots of different choices on this one, which is as expected. One of you made uh, a really great illegal bid already, which is awesome. You know, this this is not, you know, this is something the director would certainly frown upon, but it was an excellent try. One of you tried to bid once bid, which I love it. You know, if if you are trying to get the best description of your hand in here, one spade would be amazing. But the problem is partner bid one, no Trump. And we haven't fixed the insufficient bid portion of the bid box yet. Uh, this is a hand that should be bidding two clubs. And, and here is why. We cannot bid two spades, which is what three of you tried to do, because that will show a reverse. It'll be 17 plus points and forcing and natural, right? We certainly don't have enough points for that. Two hearts is a possibility, but we only have five, and we like to reserve the, the rebid of our suit to show six. Or if you're not going to have six, have a really good five, right? Like a solid five or close to that. Uh, two clubs is the least of all evils, actually. Think about this. We're responding to partners one no trump forcing. We can bid two of a minor with only three cards. So I understand we only have two, but what you're looking at here is a classic problem hand with this auction one heart one no trump when i have a minimum with four spades i'm stuck right so you're gonna have to lie and it's gonna be a choice of bad bids you probably should never well not probably you shouldn't pass with this hand. you kind of can't pass because you might be leaving partner in a no trump contract that's really bad considering your minor suit cards. So you want to bid something, but you have to recognize that two spades would show a much, much stronger hand. So that's the worst lie. We can't do that. And then it's a choice between two clubs and two hearts. I love two clubs because I'm really not telling too big of a lie because it could certainly only have three here when I make this bid after the forcing no trump. And I almost always like to have six when I rebid my suit, right? It's just making sure a partner knows that and has the ability to, to do something with it. Two no Trump, by the way, would be 1819, right? One, one, one heart, one no Trump, two no Trump, 1819, right? So two clubs is the only right bid and two of you got it right. Good job. This was a very tough one, guys. I expected this to be all over the place and just recognize that sometimes it's not about making a reverse. It's about, I can't reverse with this hand because I'm not good enough. This is certainly one of those. Uh, so this is a good question, uh, uh, no combed. W what if you play one no trump semi forcing? I happen to play one no trump semi forcing with a lot of my partners. I would still bid with this hand. And here's the rule: if I play semi forcing no trump, it just means that I should bid most of the time, right? The times where you're passing, or specifically when you're five three three two and you're like twelve or eleven or like a really ugly thirteen, it's okay to pass in those spots because you're rarely kind of getting away from a good spot here i just see the potential of a really terrible position if the minor shoots are what we think they are right so whenever i'm five four or whenever i'm close to a maximum like 14 if i think i would accept an invitation i would always bid over the semi forcing no trip right so just think of it that way you're almost never passing you're just passing with your very balanced minimums next case so this one's a little longer of an auction we started with one heart. Our partner bid two clubs. We bid two diamonds. Our partner bid three clubs, and we bid three diamonds. Is the three diamond bid forcing or non-forcing? And this was put in here to try to confuse you with a lot of bids. And it appears to have worked on some of you. Um, this three diamond bid has to be forcing because that two club bid that partner made over one heart was game forcing. We're in a two over one auction. 
Uh, and I, I, I'm making kind of a an assumption that most of you are playing two over one. If you're not, you should take a look at it, right? It's going to help you in a lot of these spots. But technically, that two club bid was showing a game forcing hand with clubs. And when we're in a game forcing auction, every bid we make that's not a game is forcing. Right, so three diamonds, even though it looks kind of like we're crawling up in the auction, is absolutely 100% forcing. In fact, we're not going to pass below game, so every bid we're going to make here is going to be forcing. Good job. All right, so a couple more here. We start with a diamond. Our partner bids a spade. We bid two clubs, and they raise to three clubs. Is that three club bid forcing or non-forcing? And guys, don't uh, type the answers in the chat. Uh, if you want to play along with us for the last couple of questions, just go to bidbox.xyz in your browser, and you'll see these hands ready to have their choices made. All right, so jump into bidbox. Don't uh, put the answer in the chat, because some of us are kind of thinking about what they're going to do. Right, we don't want to kind of give them the answer right away. All right, good work, guys. Definitely non-forcing. Doesn't mean we're not going to be bidding, right? But it is just an invitational hand, right? Partners kind of saying, hey, I have a club fit with you and i don't want to pass right i probably have somewhere around that good 10 to 12 and it should also suggest maybe an issue with no trump right they they could have been two no to make an invitational bit as well they chose three clubs so it's natural and it's non-forcing invitational good 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 okay this time we open a diamond our partner bid a spade we bid two clubs and they have now bid two diamonds. Is this two diamond bid forcing or non-forcing? All right, non-forcing for sure, all right? Uh, this is essentially partner going back to one of the suits we've already bid. And and that's always gonna be non-forcing. Whenever one of us just goes back to, whether we bid it first or our partner did, whenever we repeat one of our suits, it should just be non-forcing. Sometimes it might be invitational, right? But here, this is essentially a sign off. It says, hey partner, I wanna play two diamonds, that's it. Just please pass. And let's take a look at a couple of hands on this auction. Right? So the same auction we just saw, we opened a diamond, partner bid a spade. We bid two clubs correctly and partner bid two diamonds. Right? We just discussed it's not forcing, but what do we do with this hand? Right, just because it's not forcing doesn't mean we can't bid. The question is, should we bid? Okay, now I'll give you guys a, a little hint or, or a rule going forward with uh, these bid box classes. If I try to convince you of something like I did before I kind of left the chat here, um, I'm probably trying to trick you. So yeah, this is absolutely a pass, right? So be, be wary of me, your instructor. I'm going to try to kind of convince you to do something bad sometimes. And this is one of those I wanted to see some of you bid, and some of you did. And it seems logical to bid. You think you have a diamond fit, you have good shape, but remember that two diamond bid by partner is a sign off, right? 
it shows six to nine ish around that number. We don't have a game, right? Especially not a game in a minor unless we're getting insanely lucky, right? So what we do with these hands is we pass for sure. My right, partner is showing a very bad hand and they're trying to sign off. We'll let them. We're going to pass. And now if the opponents balance right behind us, if they come into the auction, you should be prepared to bid three diamonds, right? You, you're probably going to want to compete with a hand like this, but not if you don't have to, right? The opponents aren't bidding right now. Don't get yourself up to a higher level than you might be able to handle. Even though it looks like good stuff, you're certainly not going to be missing a game. So pass first. If they force you to bid, for sure you should be competing with a hand of this shape and, and this fit. Right, let's take a look at another example here. Same auction. We see that we opened a diamond. Our partner bid a spade. We bid two clubs and they bid two diamonds. And we have this hand. So make your choice. I am very impressed with all of you. You all bid, which is important. Now, this, uh, in my opinion, has two good choices, right? I kind of, I like to know with this hand. I, I have very good scattered values. I'm happy with pretty much any lead from my left-hand opponent, except for spades, which is a suit my partner bid. Uh, three diamonds is reasonable as well, right? You have, obviously, a good fit. The key thing that makes both of these bids correct, two no and three diamonds, is the extra values you have. You're never gonna bid over partner's sign off this two diamond bid unless you have a hand like this, a hand that kind of has no trump values but couldn't open no trump for some reason. And so here I have a very solid 16, but I couldn't open a no trump because I had a singleton spade. So now I get to show my extra values. Partner's trying to sign off. The two no bid should be a very good 16, 17-ish type hand. Right, a hand that's at the higher end of our rebid range. When I rebid two clubs, my range is like 12 to 17-ish, sometimes even like weird 18s. When I bid after a sign-off like I'm doing now, I'm at that top end, right? I'm a good 16 to 18. And think of it, from partner's perspective, they said, hey, buddy, I want to sign off. And you said, hey, buddy, not right yet. Right, so this has to be extra stuff. And what we're trying to do is get to game when partner's at the high end of their range. Right? If partner has a good 8 or 9, we probably want to play game, especially if we have a source of tricks like that in diamonds. Right, so just remember, all of you bid, which is great. Uh, the the 5 diamond bid, yeah, probably a little too much. You're hoping for a lot. Just bid 2 no and let partner bring their information into the equation. Right, Because if they have only 6 points, we're certainly not going to want to be much higher than we already are. Right? But it's when they have that extra stuff that we want to be getting to those games. All right. So this time, we have opened a no trump. Our partner bid two clubs. We bid two diamonds, and they bid two hearts. Is that two heart bid forcing or non-forcing? Uh Guy, your question was, isn't opener's second bid too shy? And the answer is absolutely not. That was the last hand we saw. Uh, we had a 16 count with diamonds and clubs, all right? The only other choice is pretty much there when, when I open a dime, my partner bids a spade, is three clubs. And that's a, that's a jump shift. And that shows 19 plus points and is game forcing. Right? It's a huge hand, actually. So because of that, 
the only choice is to bid two clubs. And that's why, though, that that range, when opener bids a new suit at the lowest level, their range should always be 12 to 17, sometimes even 18, because we're going to have issues if we don't play it that way. We cannot make a jump shift without a massive game-forcing hand, okay? So that's why that range is, is just a little wider for our new suit bids. And no comb, I'm not sure I understand the question that you're asking there. Well, let's jump into this one first. Uh, this is non-forcing. Uh, this is an interesting one. You might have heard this called garbage stamen or crawling stamen or even creeping stamen, right? Uh, this is essentially a terrible, terrible hand that wants us to pick a major, right? We bid, They bid stamen. We bid two diamonds. The bid of two hearts is kind of an attempt to sign off in a major. And it pretty much says, hey, partner, my hand is so bad that it's worthless in no trump. I need us to play a suit to have some possibility of taking a trick. All right, so our choice as south here would essentially be, hey, which major do we want to play in, hearts or spades? My partner's giving us a choice. Uh, this is kind of a special one. You will not see this very often, all right? But this specific auction, one no, stamen, two diamonds, two hearts, should always be, hey, pick a major, I'm really bad. Okay, let's jump to the next one. All right, so this time we opened a no trump. Our partner bid two clubs, we bid two diamonds, and they bid three hearts. Is three hearts forcing or non-forcing? Four spades to the Yeah, you, you would hope that you, uh, no, this is an answer to Nocomb's question in the chat. Uh, you would really hope and pray that the opponents heard your partner bid a spade and didn't lead it, right? You're, you're really not going to be able to guarantee that you can't lose spade tricks, but what you're hoping is that there was enough deterrence from a spade lead, and how often is partner going to have that terrible of a spade suit? You know, hopefully not too often. Uh, Maria Elena, this is potentially smolen uh, if you agree to play it with your partner. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer this. This is definitely forcing. Anytime we make a new suit bid at the three level, even on this auction, it is game forcing. And with standard agreements, this three heart bid says, hey, partner, I have exactly five hearts and four spades. I bid stamen first. You did not show a major. And now I'm showing you a five card heart suit. Smolen, which is noted on this hand as well in the notes, is a conventional agreement where we kind of flip-flop it. So if you play Smolen, this is somewhat different, but the key answer here is it's still forcing. In fact, it's game forcing, right? So this is a, a bid that can never be passed, and essentially it's giving us the choice. In a standard auction, Three Hearts says, hey, I want you to choose between hearts or no trump. And your choice is going to be based on whether you have three hearts or two, right? So you're absolutely going to choose only and solely based on that information. So what we're going to assume for the next one is that we're playing standard, right? If you play Smolin, you know what to do. However, we're agreeing with the partner we're playing with now that we play standard. We did not discuss Smolin. So this three heart bid should be exactly what we just said. It shows five cards in the heart suit and a game forcing hand. So what do we bid? I like it. Everyone is taking their time with this one. 
It's good. We only have a couple questions left, so savor each one. I'll give you a few more seconds to get your answers in, and then I'll post it here. All right, so like I said before, this is solely based on the number of hearts you have, right? If three hearts is natural, which it should be here, we are bidding four hearts. And I know we are flat, right? We have a perfectly balanced hand. So from our perspective, this looks like a hand where we'd want to play no trump, right? We're flat. We're not going to be trumping anything. But remember, partner is certainly not flat. Right? Partner has nine cards in the major suits. So they have an unbalanced hand and definitely don't want to be playing no trump. So here we get ourselves to the safest spot. And this is always your choice, right? If you have three of their major and they make this bid, whether it's small or not, you're going to bid four of the major you have a fit in, right? And no matter what your shape is, this end is so flat you might get greedy or just think no trumps the best when in reality it's almost always that major suit because partner is the one that's definitely unbalanced. All right. A couple more and we'll be done for the morning. Right, so this time we opened one no trump. Our partner bid two spades, which we agree is a club transfer. And so for our purposes, the partner I have you playing with today plays two spades as clubs. And we rebid two no trump, which we also agreed, said, hey, partner, I don't like clubs, right? I don't have, I'm unlikely to have a good honor in this suit or three or more, right? So two no trump by us just said, hey, partner, I don't really like clubs. And now partner bid three hearts. Is that three heart bid forcing or non-forcing? And for those of you that really want to go the extra mile, if you type into the chat what you think three hearts is, I'll tell you if you're right afterwards. But for everyone else, is it forcing or non-forcing? Three hearts. This is non-forcing. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Kidding. It's forcing. <laughs> and you'll see right now that I got the answer wrong on my screen. It's forcing because can it be hearts? Just think about that for a second. Can three hearts actually be hearts? And the, the quick answer is absolutely not, right? If partner had hearts, they would not have tried to transfer to clubs first. They would have either started with stamen or a transfer. So in fact, this three heart bid is still, hey, I definitely have clubs because I transferred you into clubs, but I also have shortness in hearts. It's a really excellent agreement to have. If you're playing minor suit transfers, it's awesome, right? Because you get to make a nice descriptive bid that can't be anything but this. So three hearts is... Hey, partner, I have heart shortness, and I still like the idea of clubs. And we tell our partner next, I do not like the idea of clubs. I'm bidding three no trump. All right, so our next bid was three no. And now our partner bid four clubs. Is that four club bid forcing or non-forcing? And I believe this is our last problem. This is your last chance to excel. Good luck. And I thank all of you for joining me this morning. We're going to be doing some more of these. The, the Memphis Nationals are coming up next week, so I probably will be pretty busy down there. But at the beginning of April, we're going to start seeing a lot more of these and a lot more of these kind of fun games where we're certainly making bridge choices, but we're kind of having a little more fun with it than usual. At least I hope so. And this is a very good one to end on because we have a half and half situation. It's exactly split down the middle right now between forcing and non-forcing. And I will let you all off the hook because it is absolutely forcing. 
In fact, partner is really trying to play slam in clubs. That's what this means, right? This says, hey, I know you didn't like clubs. I, gave, I showed you shortness. You still didn't like clubs. Guess what? I still want to play clubs, and I want to play higher than game, right? So here I am bidding for clubs in order to get us to play clubs and to play higher than just game if possible, All right? So this is a forcing bid, guys. All right. Uh, thank you for the comments, Allison. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm a huge Canada fan, so I, I anytime I see you guys from Victoria or Toronto, anywhere on Canada, I'm happy. I uh, enjoy giving these lessons to you, and I hope you enjoy kind of running through your choices and actually getting some real experience in a short period of time. So we got through, God, I think like 30 or so problems. That's a heck of a lot to get through in an hour and a half. So you know, I appreciate you guys joining, and just take a look at the YouTube page or learnbridge.nyc, and you'll see when our next class will be. I hope to see you then, guys. Until next time, I will see you at the tables, and have a blast, guys. Take care.